YouTube, hello. Um, I don't know how frequently you watch my videos, but um, if you didn't watch the Most Annoying Strategy episode last week, check it out. It's in the description because it's kind of relevant. This T player is in the top 100 and is picking Spanish and always goes for YOLO. Um, interesting player to talk about a lot in that video, but I started to get an idea of what he was up to because I'd faced him a few times in the ladder. I remember the first time in particular, I, I did everything right. I had a lead with villagers. I had a lead with TCs. I had military. Ended up getting a castle right on my face. Uh, not a great feeling. So I was just playing some ranked. A little bit of self-brag, but I'm, I'm around the top 100 here. It's really weird, but I stall out at 2150 right now. Um, I don't know why I can't bump up 50 points, but that's just, I go up 30, I go down 30, it's 2150. That's where I'm at, but I am proud of that. Um, I don't see myself as someone who's hugely talented, so I feel like the, uh, the time and effort I've put in over the years has paid off somewhat. Um, Mouse, are you going to work for me? Okay, there we go. And so I'm playing Mayans. Uh, Mayans top three? Yeah, I'd say top three. Um, actually, my most comfortable civilization to go to for 1v1 Arabia. Um, Chinese are probably overall a little bit better. But the thing is, uh, I like to play random Civ Arabia. And I always have that um, selected. And I have Mayans just in case someone doesn't enable random Civ. And the people who don't enable random Civ are also the type to treat a ranked game like a tournament. And so I had some concerns over, you know, maybe getting lamed a little bit if I go Chinese, something like that, which can hurt. So I'm Mayans. And I kind of had a feeling how this guy would play because of, oh, of run-ins I've had in, uh, I've had with him in the past. And so from what you saw in the video last week, he's a player who, he doesn't go scouts, he doesn't go man-at-arms, he's just thinking, how can I get to a castle? Which heavy, heavily, excuse me, relies on stone spots. And I'm like, no, I'm going to take your goats. Yeah, I'm going to take your goats. I, uh, at times, have been on record saying that laming in ranked games is a little too tryhard. I will never, ever apologize for someone who does not enable random sieve Dabish. and picks a YOLO thing like this. I will do whatever it takes it. <laughs> to keep castles or whatever away from me. Whatever it takes, okay? I won't apologize. <laughs> I wouldn't even let him push his ostrich. I'm like, I, I've had this happen to me before, man. Stay away. It's, this is terrifying. And that sets him back a little bit, right? Because, uh, I mean, it sets him back a lot of bit. He didn't even try and chase it down, which is kind of weird. He was actually pushing deer, being greedy. And I guess he was hoping that his other two sheep would be over here. Uh, but nope. They're on the way back to my base. And so I, I was a little uncertain on how to approach this against him. Um, I had an idea that he was going to go FC, which is Fast Castle, but I was unsure on if I should try and punish that with Feudal Age Aggression. Um, you know, Fast Archers, Towers, those are all things that kind of come to mind when you're thinking, uh, uh excuse me, when you're thinking of uh, going against a Fast Castle, because their Feudal Age time is so late. But I also recognize that he's got this interesting way of doing it, where he won't go for a clean Fast Castle build. He actually goes up to Feudal Age at the perfect time where he can make defensive towers if he needs to. And then he'll just use gold, buy food, and go up to Castle Age. And his stone is safe, and then he's good. So what I decided to do here was do something which is a little bit off meta and go for uh, Drush FC. So I figured I'm going to wall up, uh, go Fast Castle behind this, and we'll see. I'm actually really curious. Uh, I don't really watch my games too frequently. No! Stay away from that ostrich, man. I was, I was, I was keeping an eye on everything he was doing, but um, shot it. But yeah, I, I'm, I'm really curious what my build order looks like from back here. Is uh, it's easy for me to criticize and like poke holes in what someone else is doing, but sometimes you're making those decisions in game and you're just like, yeah, this is fine, and you don't realize until you rewatch it. Like, this is just, dude. This is just so bold. So bold. And I, at this point, if you look at my scouting, is I'm, I'm really trying to get through here with my militia. I didn't have that stone scouted. I didn't have any back stone scouted either. I wasn't really focused on the stone because we're eight minutes. Stone should not really be a huge thing of importance here. Not right now, anyways. Um, 
But okay, I, I'm able to break through with the Drush, which is a really big deal because the Drush is meant to just delay. And uh, at home, I am walling. I think in hindsight, if I kind of expected him to do this, I don't need to wall. I could actually wall later on. Here I am trying to block the villager. Block a block a block a block a block a block a nope. I, I suck. Okay, I lost the eagle. It's worth the effort. Uh, still have the militia here. And so I'm just like, let's be annoying, right? I, this guy's annoying because he picks Spanish and doesn't go random civ and he's going to castle drop me. Let's be annoying. Two years ago, I would say the drushes never kill villagers. And that is all about idle time. Nowadays, a lot of high-level players are actually getting bill kills now. So, it's still about annoyance, and it's about this type of thing, right? Where he's off of resources, but bill kills are always nice. If you look at my perspective, um, granted, I don't think I was paying attention to it, because there's no re nothing I can do about it, but I can see the ostrich is actually going down. And uh, lots of idols underneath the TC here for T. Really is feeling good about my position in terms of just just making his eco even worse than it's probably already going to be because of the strategy T is going for. Now, in the game I uploaded, T went Feudal Age a whole lot faster here. So this is this is a little late. See? It's around the time that I'm doing it. But no real way for me to take this player off of stone, which is a big thing. Um, I, I know the gold's going to be important. My militia are probably not going to get kills now. I thought maybe I could get this villager wedged in here and get a kill. But then it just, somehow she can walk through me like that. Thanks, DE. That's actually good, <laughs> by the way. But it's just weird how sometimes units can path through other units and other times they don't. So I don't really know what makes a difference there. Hey, I've gone for the Great Wall of freaking China over here, man. And I don't know why I'm not taking that goat. Did I forget... This is what I, did I did I seriously not see that goat? I'm still being annoying with the militia. It's a shame I didn't get any villager kills, but I'm happy with all the success that I've had so far. But the goat, I gosh, why am I uploading this stuff to the internet? I mean, I guess I don't really need need the food because I do have the ostrich villagers coming back. I'm gonna make the archer ranges on the front here. But he uses his scout. Look at him, look at him right now. Has not even moved out. This every game's like this. Just play defense. I mean, imagine if he had a backstone, right? Imagine if the walls would have been down before my militia arrived. It happens pretty frequently because the walling's so fast with Spanish, and he commits to everything so early. Still not even moving the scout right now. It's crazy. This guy's top 100. Yeah, the goat. I, I guess this is now my pet goat. Um. Actually, a little late with golds here, which is a bit of a shame. Now, I'm going to show you guys a little trick. I don't know if you can actually see it. Uh, but if you've ever accidentally deleted a building, because you're trying to delete walls that are in front of the building so you can eject units properly, watch this. I think there's actually a hole here. Uh, and this is not something that I came up with. I actually saw someone else do it, and I forget who. I was watching a game, and I was like, why did he place a gate foundation and delete it? If you place a gate foundation, it will remove the palisades wherever you place that gate foundation. Like that, see? And then you can just delete the gate foundation, which is a whole lot easier than, than clicking all... Uh-oh. Enemies showing up to town. Uh-oh. He knows where I'm at. Um, but yeah, that's just a whole lot easier for me anyways. It might not be better for you. And I was very happy to kill... I thought I... Oh, he tried to click out. Oh, I remember giggling about that. I think what happened there, it's just it just worked out that I deleted that right before he tried to click out. And that was the only way for his units to escape. So he ran right back into my archer. I remembered killing that, so I was a little confused there. Yeah, economically, things are looking pretty good for me. I've got two ranged archers, which is similar to what Comtam did, if you remember, in that game I uploaded. Um... T really wisely has already switched off of stone, realizing that I'm going to be coming forward with the archers. It does have the stone for a castle. So this is not going to be the best FC time ever. But 17 minute castle time with walls and the, the eco to make conquistadors is pretty impressive. Now, anytime someone goes for this type of a strategy, as we actually, I don't think he was expecting my archer to come over here. Shot it. I think he's realizing that he, things are going to be a little awkward for him on this side. If archers get there, and he's right about that, that's exactly where I'm going. Um, but 
shoot, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, so naturally, I'm gonna have eco lead. Looks like there was a hole there I didn't notice. Right between the market and the wood line. Now I notice, and now he notices. And and you should have the lead if you play the way I'm playing this. Uh, but the thing is, is that the yoloness and the aggression can really get to you at times. And it, it, it just... What follows is just mass amounts of mistakes. I was hoping to get a villager kill. I had not got a villager kill, and I knew that there would be a lot of weak villagers around. There's there's quite a few if you look. Look how many villagers I weakened, man. My crossbows want them. They're hungry for kills. And now at home, I add a second town center just, just for an eco lead. Just add more villagers so I can make more military. Still so close to killing villagers. I was actually tempted here. I think he ejects them. I knew there was that one weak one, and I was tempted to try and get it as I'm avoiding the castle fire. But those are the types of things I try and do right there. Boom. Monday? I try and do Shot. that, and then I lose the unit, and I don't look good. So I just said, nope, I'm a caster. Know your limits. And uh, just, just constantly trying to keep this guy on the back foot. Because there's going to be a point where the conquistadors arrive. There's going to be a point where siege arrives. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Presta. Yeah. Um... A couple things to be worried about in my near future, but I had no clue that Villager was there. I am, uh, I remember struggling. I really didn't transition into farms properly or just food in general. I think I should have eaten that freaking goat, man, which is still there. Don't know Villager kills 12 army for me, three for him, but three Conquistadors uh, is, is a lot stronger than what three crossbows would be. And finally, I get a kill. I need to get fletching because this castle needs ranges. Man, imagine if stone walls would have been there. If he would have stonewalled that, he could have placed this castle so much more, like, he could have placed it further back, and I could never hit anything. I couldn't hit any part of his eco. So it was a good thought from him, just a little late, and I guess I give some credit to myself for sending the archer forward. Okay, so siege workshop in the middle. I have no clue that's there. I get a villager kill. I'm just happy to see the villagers getting killed off at this point. And this this is a solid game of Age of Empires 2, right? But the main reason I'm uploading this is so I, I can give you guys thoughts on kind of what happens against this type of uh, aggression and show you how much he commits to things. It's ridiculous. And, um, of course, embarrass myself, which happens every time I upload. But... All right. Well, now you're looking at five conks. He does have the first armor upgrade. I'm still trying to pick off farmers. Big thing for me is... You have the eco lead, just make sure you can maintain that. Make sure you can hold on to it. So I transferred villagers to stone here. Now I've I've uh I told you guys that I'm struggling to get 2k2, and I think I'm so farm gold and wood focused that I go to stone a little too late. I mean, clearly I go to stone later than tea. So I, I have actually the time I'm going to stone right now doesn't feel right to me based on how I like the, the game sense I have built up over the years. I'm always going about five to six villagers before it feels right to me, if that makes any sense. It's like if you're, um, I don't know if you guys can relate to this at all, but let's say you're, you're like, playing a sport, and where you throw the ball, it always ends up a little bit short of where you think you're throwing it, so you, like, put a little bit more weight on it, and it goes perfect. That's kind of, um, that's kind of the logic I apply to my stone eco right now. 53 villagers versus 32. I mean, this is not a game I should ever lose. And if I lose it, it's not a game I should ever upload to YouTube. Spoilers. Kikisadors are coming forward. And I, I just appreciate this T player so much because of how much he commits. I shot it. Now, <laughs> this is where I, um, I soon needed a change of pants. <laughs> I'm running forward to try and range his woodline. I'm like, he's got nothing. Monday? And I see this villager, so I figured, okay, well, he's going to go build the siege workshop. I just won the game. And now I see conquistadors hitting my house. And again, I'm like, this is perfect. I prepped house walls. And now I'm like, wait, how does he have siege? Monday? How is it possible? And so this is where the panic starts to set in, people. Um, you know, I need crossbow numbers. Because my crossbows here, they're they're going forward. Monday? Do I get a kill? Tell me I get a kill. Tell me I get a kill. Oh no, I'm running in the castle fire. Tell me I get a kill. Oh no, I'm losing units. No, don't. I'm I'm distracted, guys. I'm panicked. This is so, guys. This game is hard, guys. Instantly fall back to a market. Don't worry, the goat's still sitting there. The goat is still. 
watching the, 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 the sticks? I don't know what that is. I'm trying to sit a few crossbows behind this woodline just to be annoying, but I'm losing my ranges. And Maganels are coming, and who knows if a castle's ever going to follow this up. Oh, jeez. Well, two Maganels, two Rams, and when you play against a player like T, what you're expecting is a lot more focus on his uh, micro. So I wouldn't say that Maganel micro is really one of my strong suits anyways, but I'm still... Like, the way I'm going to win this is with Eco, right? So I hop out, and I'm like, oh! And I completely whiff. <laughs> I completely whiff. And now I hop out again. Oh! Boom! I, I got one. I'm happy about that. But now I don't have a Maganel to save my workshop. So I'm dropping a castle in farm space next to my TC. I've lost two forward ranges. I, I, I've, I've lost farms. I only have nine on food. Let's we'll start to see some T90 farms as I try and relocate that. He, he added a lot of conks at home, and it's 14 military for both of us. Absolutely terrifying to play against. It, this guy's basically like Quang, except he you know, used, used the Spanish. Um, and Quang actually has done that in the past. So I'm, I have uh, killed four villagers in this game. I actually haven't, haven't lost one, which is making me feel pretty good. I say feeling pretty good. There's nothing good about the situation right now. Idle time. I I'm surprised my idle time hasn't skyrocketed more, to be honest. There must be some villagers out there for blue, as I think we see that villager come forward. Split micro! Faster micro! Ah! Alright, I'll take it. Yeah, Vil's probably coming forward to repair the siege. It's always important. Now, he sees I've castled there. He knows I have eco over here, so he's trying to loop around to hit that. Because this, this is inaccessible. This castle's a really good castle because it protects real important areas of my eco, and I'm happy I sent villagers this way. He's got so many conks, though, and all he's going to do is just snipe my mangoes. Snipe my mangoes, and then I'm going to get wrecked. Every time I'm going to get wrecked. And so I, um, I'm worried that despite having an eco lead, that I'm going to end up like, um, like Comtam, where I just get castle dropped as he's transferred to stone at home uh, and Ed conked and Maganel to death. Really tough composition to face up against. And I, I, you're under pressure. You are under pressure. And so the villager, finally I lose a villager. And I'm like, I need to get this castle up now. Very thankful that he didn't have the confidence to move forward with those Maganels because he could have maybe taken it out and one thing he does do really well, I mean, he does a lot of things really well, but the main thing he does really well is that he will spot golds, and he will try and deny them. Fortunately for me, the castle goes up. Look at how you have to play to have a chance. So against players like this, and it's it's against all the Yolo players, you have to get a lead, and then you just have to stall out whatever type of pressure they're going to do for as long as possible. And for me, I have doubled eco, which is fantastic. Um... And so it makes me feel as though I have survived and I've won the game right now. Okay, that, that's how I feel. Now, when this happens, <laughs> you have a lot of farms that no longer have farmers. Uh, I am on castles trying to produce plumes, so that's wood and gold focus. And I'm trying to get my villager count. You know, I, I, I just feel the need to create more villagers, right? So I'm adding a fourth TC to protect this. Um, unsure where he's going to go with the rest of his units. I'm completely blind. I'm expecting him to show up here with Siege. And I'm just not going to have Imperial Age coming in. I'm producing a lot of bills, which is a lot of food, and I'm not really prioritizing the farms like I should. Look at the approach from T. Look at this. Now, I, I think these villagers... Honestly, I don't even know. I think at one point I didn't think I could take this gold, so I was trying to find extras. And then I, I had to check to see if he was taking his own stone. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't taking it, so I said, okay, I'll borrow it. Um, and look at the approach from T. This madman's actually going to go fast him. Meanwhile, I'm thinking he's going to ca all in castle rush me with rams because I know that he likes to do that. So I'm going to add Magnols behind my castle. Oh, really big moment for me here. Oh, I needed this. Oh, double, baby. And I'm going to drop another castle and T's fast imping. So if someone defends with castles from this, he knowing that he's way behind an eco switches into a fast imp to drop a forward castle, as I uh, was able to kill some villagers here, to drop a forward castle, 
and then treb those castles down Monday. it's crazy it's a crazy way to switch out of all in castle -like direction right instead of spending that that food and gold on like everything you get on kongs you just stop producing bills stop producing kongs and you you want to go for a castle drop but as i i think these were idols I started using the select all idle villager hotkey and I think I just sent all idle villagers somewhere. <laughs> but anyways, I uh I think I'm gonna be okay here. <laughs> oh man, the idle time, the craziness, I think I'm gonna end up being okay here. I think I was very fortunate that well first off the lame in Dark Age definitely helped me delay him. I think I was also very fortunate as I was able to kill a few more fills here. Um <laughs> Uh, fortunate that he had forward stones. I, if you guys are interested in updates, you know, have to let me know. I'm definitely going to run into this player more. As he's still coming forward to try and drop that castle, man. Probably wants to drop it on the hill. Maybe tread me down. Um, but yeah, I, I, I will be curious to see what happens if I face him again on the ladder with a back stone. I think I would probably try and do the same. Probably try and get some early lames in to, to delay him. And then just go into crossbows, but... And there were moments here, I mean, the KD wasn't super pretty for me this game. There were moments where if I wasn't as far ahead, I, I could see it being a disaster. As we see some splits, see wheelbarrow, and I'm going to be on the way to imp anyways. So this is the classic way to end the game. I absolutely love this. I know you guys probably do it as well. GG right after imp. We call that the fast imp into GG. <laughs> and uh, I guess could have called it a little earlier, but just ended up waiting for that. Um... Yeah, so overall, I mean, if there wasn't a backstory to this, this wouldn't have been the most interesting game to to upload. But I think, and I'm going to start doing this a little more frequently. Um, there are games that I play, and I think it's interesting to hear casting, but also uh, player's perspective. Because I can only speculate on someone's ideas and what they were thinking at the time when I cast their games. And a lot of the times, because I've been there myself, I kind of have an idea of what they're going for. But um, you don't always hear it from the player's mouth and so uh, from time to time if i ever play a really interesting game or discover a really interesting player i am going to upload it and uh, for better or for worse man you guys know me i've made some uh some big errors over the years and uh those errors i'll see you too because it's content for you so t is gonna keep doing his thing uh and trying spanish at 2k1 you know, I just know if I ever get close to 2200... Look at the timeline! That's so funny! If I ever get close to 2200, if I'm, let's say, five points away, I'm going to get this freaking player and get castle dropped and lose. It's just just my luck. Anyways, guys, um, thanks for watching. Leave a like on the video if you enjoyed. And uh, I'll see you when I see you. Which actually will be tomorrow, hopefully. I I'm trying to upload every day again. So, see you then!